get dropped out and all. Okay. Now, time to put everybody on mute. You will not unmute yourself. Either may host only. Very good. Now we are on. Now, first thing is, right now also the news remains same. We should have exam by July. But again, the situation is such that nobody can say yes or nobody can say no. So it's going on. You better be prepared for definitely last week of June you should be ready to take. Right now, as far as you go, your preparatory time has started, preparatory leave sort of has started. And now these sessions, since we have finished syllabus, now onwards you will have to ask questions or we continue and or we can continue the repeating what we have done in a faster method because you have got the questions. You have to finish up all those questions answering. I will check it up. You need to take tests. Now, the something which I wanted to tell you, you all are very smart, very smart, but you are not crooks. Okay. If you were crooks, you would have known the trick. You can take all the tests without putting your actual Gmail. So I may not know who you have taken the test. All I will know some student has taken. And since you get the results back immediately, you also know what mistakes you have made. So you can keep on improving. So that fear of somebody else knowing how badly you have done disappears. Okay. So you all are smart, but not crooks. You did not find this method. Now one will do that, but ensure, use your PUBG ID, whatever you want. But take tests. It will change you drastically after the test, just because of the method. Okay, nozzles and applicators. Yeah, yeah, that is what whole thing, because what happens, that is practically based on firefighting. That FFA test has got a lot of about practical limits. Now, nozzles, you have uh, basically jet nozzle, spray nozzle, curtain nozzle, combination nozzles. Applicators are also same. Now, foam applicators are like venturi pipe and then it delivers the foam. It's basically more for a practical lab. Nozzles have got different diameter. So many millimeters that means that will increase the uh, reach but within limits because ships one are not expected to have a reach of something like what you say shore for fire brigades doing it our reach will be approximately maybe 30 meters 35 meters that's it you are not going to get more than that in any jet our Basic intention is cooling down. That is the best way to fight fire on ships. Cool down first, then you expect, because we are designed to fight fire, so our construction is also better. It's not like typical uh, shore-based problem where fire catches and spreads because nobody bothers. Our industrial safety and all are quite pathetic. It is a good job if you are a fire inspector anywhere, a lot of money. Uh, I mean, under table. It is simple rules are there. Labor inspectors, then this fire inspectors and all. Uh, when the place is doing business, oh, once in a year, chakkar marega. And you generally end up giving, a, let's say, good amount of money in a envelope. Close. That is unfortunate part. That is where the, these fires go out of control. Then old buildings, enough material is lying around like you know we are very fond of uh, files and papers so that is good material to start fire then then we are again fond of extensions you know taking illegal extensions so electricity is there you have got wire joined with hands and somewhere there is a shot fire catches burns everything finished and mumbai has got old buildings with a lot of wood also on top Okay, now we will start this one again. 
okay this fire training menu unless anybody wants anything very very specific because one is stuck there i am watching your assignments i am not happy yet and in the end don't force me to give you less internal marks because you are not finished all the assignments you are not taken the tests that is where it will end up right now hmm got it Okay, let us get back. See, it starts here. Fire safety objectives, which we have done. What is it? First is prevent. Then, in case it starts, reduce the risk to the life. then reduce the risk to the other things like ship and ca environment cargo etc this is the first three steps prevent reduce risk to the life reduce risk to the other factors then contain control suppress that means don't allow fire to spread control it and extinguish it in the compartment of origin because you don't want fire to spread jidhar hai udhar hi mita do matter close and then in case all the things fail you still need to protect life so provide adequate readily accessible means of escape for passengers and crew now remember whenever you are dealing with this subject uh, even though you may not be going on a passenger ship or most of the people who are teaching you also haven't been on a passenger ship anyway passengers are one of the major causes of the extra rules because passenger ships you are dealing with large percentage of amateurs because they are not meant for their passengers yeah they are not here for uh, working and fighting fire if required and all no that is our job because we are employed they are not employed there so the passengers will form a part of your answer so you have to consider them all the time when you are writing your answers then you have got the fire safety objectives defined because a question can be very much there that uh, define fire safety objectives or something and then you have to write these points so they are basically prevent reduce risk to life reduce risk to other factors then contain control suppress in compartment of origin and last is escape provide adequate and readily accessible readily accessible is very important wording in escape routes now how do you achieve it now this is what we decided how do you achieve it achieving it is done by simple thing first thing is we divide the ship in vertical and horizontal zone by thermal and structural boundaries that means instead of making ship as a one big huge compartment what we are doing we make it like boxes in boxes so each compartment is separated from other by thermal boundaries and structural boundaries so instead of having one big box now we have got more boxes inside so damage hoega ek ke andar hi hoega then accommodation spaces are separated from remainder of the ship the reason being rest of the ship has got cargo you have got machinery space etc etc but the people live in accommodation spaces so people have to be protected because that was our first principle okay reduce risk to the life so accommodation block has to be protected so it has to be protected by thermal and structural boundaries that means 
your accommodation is an independent unit added on on the ship you can cut it off independently theoretically of course then when you make the ship you don't make it with the combustible materials you restrict the use of combustible material so first you check can i replace this material with something else why is combustible so we reduce use of combustible material as much as possible you remember nowadays uh, i don't know if you all have seen mahabharat and all the the tv series and all i don't know if it is in there or no but there was attempt made on pandavas life by putting them in a house which was made out of combustible materials and then that was set on fire so that is combustible material that means like say today's buildings modern buildings don't have combustible material in apartments if you take empty one empty apartment doesn't have there is no wood practically except the doors door is wood windows nowadays you have got all metal ones so there is nothing to burn what burns in the end is what furniture and all what we put inside clothes and all that combustible material comes in but for construction it is a restricted use earlier houses you will find lot of wood was used now wood is combustible so there was high service okay 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 one minute huh? i have to leave cadet dozo out he, moment he says studies are on he gets excited hmm <clears throat> so I think I was right in naming him Cadet Dozo because the moment we talk about studies, he likes to escape. Okay, <clears throat> then detection of any fire. See, when we have been doing this syllabus, we have seen couple of things, and then the fire detectors come in somewhere because it is requirement. functional requirement so you have to have fire detection system and what type of system that it must detect fire in the compartment of origin you can't be saying that there is fire in general sense you say fire is where exactly that means the detection must be in a zone of origin you can say okay this part is on fire accommodation third deck is on fire understandable you can just say ship is on fire then containment and extinction of fire in space of origin that is what we saw first why because now we have separated everything by thermal and the structural boundaries the fire should not spread out and you should contain it within that area so that the damage is restricted others are safe at it itna jal gaya but everybody else is safe protection of means of escape and access for fire fighting now this is where we come in with two things the escape route must be protected at all the times because in case in case we have to withdraw and abandon ship you should have a safe passage to the lifeboat no so this is where that escape route must be protected and that is how it is protected by class a bulkheads anyway the best way and also if you have to fight fire how will you approach the fire that part also must be protected it should not happen that you go for fire fighting and piche mein aag lag gayi you cannot have that because then your cut your route is escape route is cut off if you have to withdraw you can't withdraw this is the problem so protection of means of escape and access for fire fighting the protection has to be there for these places then ready availability of fire extinguishing appliances now this is important part that you have fire it is detected but do you have fire extinguishing appliances readily available now readily available means you have got examples like Uh, fire extinguishers, portable types or fixed types at 
specific location. So if there is a fire nearby, I find some fire extinguishing system. I'm talking portable ones right now. Appliances are fixed as well as portable both, but they should be readily available. That means even when we talk about things and this misunderstanding very often I have noticed from people. 24 by 7 is called ready availability. There is nothing like there is a fire, you inform, then somebody will go and start a fire pump and then you wait for 10 minutes for water to come. No. We are talking few seconds time it should be available. This misunderstanding I have detected in the past also, but don't carry forward with these ideas. Anything that is required for fire extinguishing is readily available 24 by 7. Not like Jake, somebody will check this, check that. No. It used to happen on Indian ships once upon a time, but that is not the correct thing. This is the difference. Like, you know, professionals have it ready, means they have got it ready. Not like, abhi ye karna baki hai, wo karna baki. Because as it is, when you get fire alarm, you already have lost, say, uh, n number of minutes. Why? Because fires get started. Then by the time it's detected and alarm has started, it may be few minutes there. Then by the time you react to reach the fire for extinguishing it, you may have lost another 10 minutes. So fire is already spread and if you don't have ready availability of fire extinguishing appliances, uh, that fire will spread further, killing people. And the last point is minimization of possibility of ignition of flammable cargo papers. Now this is specifically applicable to tankers. The tankers say there is cargo, liquid cargo with a certain flash point, there is evaporation, there is a flammable cargo vapor available. And remember word cargo, huh? don't mix up with the ship's fuel supply because every ship has got fuel. What we are talking here is specifically cargo. Now that flammable one is going to escape to accommodation one way or the other, sometime or the other. In that case, you have to reduce the possibility of ignition. That means you allow it to escape in a specific way so that it doesn't get ignited. That is what we are talking. <clears throat> then this carriage of dangerous goods and special category is something else altogether. We are not covering it up. Now, if there is a fire, how do you survive? In simple points, principles of survival in fire means first thing you must know the knowledge of fire theory means what is fire, the fire triangle, quadrilateral, whatever you call it. Preparedness for fire emergencies. Preparedness to fight fire or if I get fire, what do I do? Preparedness will be there. Knowledge of dangers means you are aware of the risk involved. Regular training practice. Then knowing escape routes, you know, uh, yes, I am fighting fire, I know this, that, but I also know how to escape when required. Knowledge of escape routes is very important in life because when you get caught with something, I mean, in your normal student life, you must know how to escape it also. There was one guy earlier in DNS. Ah, very smart guy anyway, but... He used to get into variety of troubles, but somehow he knew how to get out of it. He used to come out with such an excuse that nobody could uh, just deny that sort of a thing. Ah, ho sakta hai. Finish. Every time he escaped. And then you have got a regular inspection maintenance because whatever you have got equipment, anything, it should be in good condition in the end. So there it needs regular inspection as well as maintenance. Hmm. What is the fire? Result of rapid oxidation. Now, you know, interestingly, even explosion is defined as a flame speed. It is not anything else, but if the flame speed is greater than this, then it is called explosion. It's like that. Now, 
rapid oxidation is different than normal oxidation what happens on a rust metal and you know what we say corrosion the oxidation is rapid now of course this is what we are saying in general sense because uh, to my knowledge it's possible for even uh, there are instances in chemistry where things can burn in atmosphere of nitrogen also but leave it aside right now we look basically oxygen as a culprit here what is it normal triangle one you need fuel to burn you need heat and oxygen now no matter what happens under normal circumstances oxygen is always present so one part is always there another part is what fuel fuel is an option in there are many areas there is no fuel so there will be no fire but fuel has to be present because something that has to burn that is fuel heat because obviously you need a minimum heat which will allow ignition to take place so there has to be certain amount of heat depending on what is fuel then it will start fire very nice fire has started but it will not sustain why it will not sustain because there is no chemical chain reaction chemical chain reaction keeps on recreating the condition at when the fire started otherwise fire will extinguish itself hmm you can have real life examples also of this i mean relationships can be compared with this unless there is a chemical chain reaction relationships don't last you will hear this this is more advanced stuff so, you know at some stage you have to give this about love and all those theories that time you will use this this is the reaction okay now since we know the three combinations are required for starting fire now you want to stop the fire all you do is remove one side now removing one side is a standard principle but even removing the chain reaction the fourth part of the triangle okay this is where our triangle becomes interesting there are four parts but we still call it triangle so never mind the fourth part is also essential for fire to sustain that means even if you remove that there is a chance fire will extinguish unless it has reached beyond that where the heat has become so much that uh, you need more than that because then heat has to be removed to stop fire hmm so you have got four thing which can be removed now what can be the fuel it can be solid liquid gas normally it's a gas which burns oil when you burn it it is not oil directly catching fire oil gets converted into gas and that get catches fire now that's what happens everywhere when you see fire burning that is very sustains starting is one but sustaining is another now oxygen is going to support combustion and it varies on type of combustion like for example we cannot uh, breathe if oxygen percentage is less than 80 on average okay this is average human being fire normally the flames will not survive if the fire uh, oxygen percentage drops about 14 15% but you can also have a smoldering fire which can use even a 3% oxygen so it is little difficult to judge it so we just look at it oxygen can it be cut off if you cut off oxygen fire will extinguish itself remove fuel there is nothing to burn it extinguishes itself you remove heat because the critical temperature is required so by removing heat you bring it down below the critical temperature Uh, no problem then no problem 
So in that case, what happens is you reduce it below critical temperature, so there will be no fire. So any one of these three things can be tackled in a specific way. And the chemical chain reaction, a self-sustained chain reaction is required. Now, if you interrupt that, it will stop. And then it will depend on the first three conditions, fuel, oxygen, heat. Now, if the fire has created enough of heat, and then you cut off chain uh, chemical chain reaction, then still there can be fire, reflashing, reignition because heat is there. That heat also needs to be brought down. So this is the standard this thing what we are looking at. Now let's get to the next part. Hmm. Fire spread. How will fire spread? It starts in one place. How will it spread? Assuming other things are available nearby. Now, spreading means uh, I have got fire here, and uh, 20 meters away, uh, there's a say, by 25, 10 meters away, I got a bulkhead. Beyond the bulkhead, there is a fuel available. Oxygen is available. So, basically, what is required is heat to transfer. So fire will spread only if heat can be transferred because the fuel is not going to get spread unless it is like a typical oil film floating on uh, water and then you disturb it and allow it to spread and all that's the difference. Basically fuel you will not be able to spread, only heat you will manage to spread. So this is where you have to control that. How does it spread? Conduction, a standard thing, passed on particle by particle and carries forward. Convection, instead of passing by contact, it goes and replaces. So one gets heated, it goes there, another one gets heated, it goes there, and like a cycle, circulation. Radiation is how we get heat from the sun. That is radiation. Then, Direct burning. This is like, you know, uh, combustible material. Uh, when you hold a cigarette there, it will start fire, uh, you know, fire on a mattress. If you remove cigarette, it will stop. It happens. Unless it gets a self-sustained thing. Because it will start again then it keeps on spreading out itself because a particle passes on to other and depending on the heat. Then there is also another thing with direct contacts like, you know, a room or any compartment has got six sides. It can spread from six sides. Four walls, rooftop, deck. There are six sides to every room. So it can spread from six sides. Plus, if there are any ducts, like in normal households, we don't have ducts because we have got direct things like AC, everything. But suppose, for example, if you have got a duct, like hotels and all, you will find the AC is brought there through the ducts. The commercial places, offices and all have a... Now, fire can spread through the duct also because duct may not be clean. See, when things are going around, like, you know, air is being circulated, and the air has got certain impurities. It can be like uh, materials like cotton, like, you know, some sort of fibers and all. They may collect it, and they all form a fuel, and they can catch fire and transmit it to other compartments. So that is where ducts, you have to be more careful. Commercial places, that is one of the biggest danger is these ducts. Now, fire growth. Okay. See, look at these pictures actually. Because 
once the heat starts the flame starts then the temperatures will start shooting up now depending on what is on fire and on their different flame temperatures and all but like uh, for example uh, when somebody is smoking cigarette the tip of the cigarette when he is pulling in with the oxygen a temperature of 650 700 degrees can reach if you ever seen coal and all and when you blow there and then what happens coal is burning and then suddenly it catches the flame why because you blew extra oxygen and all but once the flame comes then it starts spreading faster now what happens is hot air will climb up it goes up so early stages the temperature at the decade will decrease then further on is from the seat of the fire because in the beginning temperature is higher here and as it moves away it is passing on the heat so the temperature will low later on a condition will come this will become same and the third stage is this one will become higher and start spreading the fire beginning heat is here and as it is going up it is also spreading next stage goes up same temperature third stage it starts going and giving away more heat now it is giving more heat which is transferred there then there is back draft it means in you know, one way or the other what we are looking at it here is the heat which is transferred now heat goes beyond the critical point fire will spread it's like uh, one compartment is on fire heat is okay but now suppose this heat goes to other compartment where there is a different type of fuel available like camphor or something it is going to catch fire much faster so again it depends on the fuel but basically the spread is there what we saw our earlier that how it spreads con- conduction convection radiation and direct four methods yeah, okay read this part okay initiate a hot cigarette and now this used to be a case once upon a time because what used to happen um cigarettes were available people used to smoke no problem but we also used to have uh, alcohol available so in parties and all going on guy drink then he is smoking and then he falls asleep while smoking and then hand will drop here mattress will catch fire it has happened and some old ships have got burnt out completely but long long ago i'm talking over a period this habits were inculcated in people that don't smoke when you are drinking like this or don't go to sleep holding cigarette in hand we don't allow agarbatti nothing for even gods because we don't want any naked fire anyway which accidentally can start the fire ship is rolling pitching ship is moving all the time so you can't really trust anything cigarette normally used to be in control because i am holding it in two hands and i am sober but if i am not sober the cigarette can burn my finger also or i'll drop it somewhere it fire will start and now ships ashtrays for example are close type of ashtrays mean you put the cigarette there then you press something it opens up takes the gobbles the cigarette inside and closes again so you cut off oxygen when a cigarette goes in ashtray so remember shift ashtrays are different than what you see here you will not see those ashtrays here ashtrays on land are open type now i think we can do this classification of fires standard one a b c d a in solid b means liquid c means gases d means metals powdered metals but d is not specifically mentioned in your syllabus they have been talking tackling abc because that is more practical d is a rare commodity it's not something normal 
and then you have got f or k whatever you call it it is basically galifies cooking oils and all now what happened because they have devised different extinguishers for this wet types and all okay already some update has taken place okay so how do you fight these fires is going to be one of the questions type c there is that so you have to define exactly use the thing and how do you fight in a specific manner this is where it starts principles of fire fighting fire extinguishing fire fighting i keep on saying but fire extinguishing is the correct uh, language now here we are using a rectangle now how you do it is shown on left hand side starvation means remove fuel smothering means remove oxygen cooling means remove the heat interference means chemical reaction remove right straight forward na isme to kuch nahi hai dam hi nahi hai but some of these guys give you like five five marks on everything hmm okay now you want to start okay we'll finish only water and we'll wait for others for tomorrow okay water is i suppose it's the most prehistoric uh, extinguishing media it is generally available everywhere except in deserts and at sea you are floating in it okay it's a salt water but it is there as a water now what is the main thing about water is it has got two latent tips right one is for evaporation and one is for freezing we are using for evaporation that means what is the latent heat is the extra heat that is required to convert water at 100 degrees as a liquid to steam means gas at 100 degrees that means both the temperatures are 100 and yet it absorbs so much of extra heat now that is latent heat the so latent heat is getting used here yes, to absorb the heat which is generated by fire so what we are doing is we go back here and what are we doing here okay this is what i eat i'm so too fast okay cooling correct this part is removed by using basically latent heat because at 100 degrees uh, other than the specific oils nothing else will catch fire only certain fuel oils will catch fire because there is different but moment you bring down the temperature to 100 degrees most of the fires are extinguished that is the reason we can use this property of latent heat effectively okay now <clears throat> how do you remove heat now this is the heat chapter you have done in physics it is based on surface area the exposure the more the exposure the higher the rates heating cooling both now here what happens is if you do your calculation according to mathematics and work out what is the surface area of an air bubble of say 
10 millimeters diameter and what about 1 millimeter diameter if i take the 10 millimeter uh, diameter volume and now i make it into 1 millimeter and then i compare the surface areas of it you will find there is a massive difference that means in principle when you apply this knowledge of physics maths you know to make water efficient you must break it into a very fine mist now again coming back to your knowledge of physics there is something called surface tension that surface tension gives you a shape to the water droplet which is perfectly round a sphere it's a spherical that is what you are trying to achieve with a maximum so everything you are going to convert now using all the things from physics chemistry maths in the end you want very fine droplets to offer the maximum area the maximum area means evaporation process will be very fast the faster the evaporation process the more latent heat will be used that means so much of heat will be removed faster that is the whole idea so water is basically used on this property and once you bring down less than 100 fire is gone advantage readily available at sea it's got large capacity to absorb heat versatile because since it is liquid and you're going to deal with liquid you have got an option of sending it as a jet make it spray and so on another one is water also has got again coming back to surface tension it adheres to the surfaces so it will stick and evaporate stick and evaporate so it can absorb faster it's chemically stable because to convert water vapor into hydrogen and oxygen separately you need special conditions you need really very special conditions and catalysts so under normal circumstances water will convert into steam but it will not break down further to hydrogen and oxygen that is the reason we don't have cars running on hydrogen uh, as yet I, I know the technology has come now but why it is not running right now because it is very difficult technology to convert and uh, separate them so it doesn't is chemically stable disadvantages possible adverse effect on stability on two counts one is extra weight of the water which is not pumped out the extra weight of the water depending on what deck it is collected and what is the impact on a gm another one is free surface effect now remember when you do free surface i don't know whether you're doing it now or no but free surface effect has got no factor called weight it assumes there is a surface thin film and that is your formula so there is something you have to watch out from free surface effect and the placement of load and where so it can affect your stability liquid fires may be spread through the use of water it's possible why because liquids get mixed up and water will carry it and spread it or when the fire is still on so that is one of the dangers if you have got any liquids on fire if you don't have liquids you are okay but that is where liquid fire like oil fires and all we use foam we don't use water only an expert may be able to use water but it needs very special uh, hose handling skills i have seen a demo but it needs very special ones and now there are modern methods that come where you have got this hypermesh type of systems which come in pulses so they remove heat without causing liquid there means the droplets are so fine it acts more like a gas and removes the heat and that is how the fire may come under control but just keep it in mind don't have to remember and don't write it in paper because other person may not understand it 
another problem is sea water sea water is electrically conducted so if you use jet uh, or any water on live circuits you can get electrocuted now water can also react chemically react with certain chemicals and all certain substances and produce toxic vapors possible it's a chemically it is true practically uh, you may not have such uh, substances on board but it is possible that water reacts in certain uh, with certain substances then it can cause some cargoes to swell i am using water on wood pulp or say paper it will absorb and it will swell it will swell and it can cause a big problem once upon a time i had ships ripped open okay those ships were very old types but it got water got mixed up and the cargo swell up and it ripped open the ships so that is possible but cargoes can swell based on what is the cargo then property damage is one of the most common causes when you use water uh, in uh, jet or like big sprays and all where the large amount of water gets used because uh, the property on fire but maybe uh, spread over 5 square meters you extinguish it so there will be some contact area that cargo gets damaged but if your water is spread all over all cargo can be damaged because of entry of salt in the cargo the salt in the cargo can damage the cargo completely so that is one of the things and because of that salt there can be additional damage excessive water can damage the all the wooden furniture etc etc and another big disadvantage if if the temperatures are extremely cold water freezes that means it no longer behaves like liquid to flow through pipes it doesn't flow through pipes then there is a problem how will you deliver water there now don't mix up things temperatures can be sub zeros but that doesn't mean fire is not going to start because fire is an independent thing surrounding area may be sub zero but the localized area has got the problem why because it has got heat it has got fuel it's got oxygen all the three conditions it needs a chain reaction fire starts so fire can start under, at any temperatures it has got nothing to do with sub zero so it shouldn't start that is the psychological for us okay how it is normally used water as a media one is we have got portable extinguishers which are filled with water and there is a driver like a co2 cartridge or something so when you use it it pressurizes water it comes out through the nozzle small nozzle and just puts the small jet which you direct at fire and extinguish it then you have got bigger types which are not portable means Uh, they are bigger one mobile ones so they have got more water same mechanism we used to get once upon a time little different one where we used to have acid and alkali combination so it used to produce co2 inside the cylinder uh, inside the extinguisher and used to push out the water i don't think you will see them anymore but it used to be there soda acid it was called then you have got sprinkler systems where it's like a shower so if there is any fire the bulb will break and the sprinkler will spray the water extinguish uh, the fire in that local area then you have got various spraying systems then comes to hypermist hypermist is like sprinkler but the pressure is much higher and technology is far superior to break the water particles into micro fine dot you know drops micro fine means it is like you know the sprays you use uh, deodorizing and all right now you may not be using but once you come back and on saturdays and sundays you use them i'm quite sure okay 
So this is the basic method. Why? Because water is used only as a cooling agent. To make it efficient, you need to break it into microfine droplets. That makes it more and more efficient. That is where we stop now today as a water. And tomorrow, if you want anything specific, please let me know in advance, at least on uh, email or something, so that I can keep those things ready. Otherwise, we'll just continue with this and do it. Along with it, you all have to continue doing the test. After test, you will realize how much more you need to study. Yeah. Mike, it now will ever. I can keep on saying a lot of stuff, but does it make any sense? You have to realize it. Once you realize it, you will do it. It's your life. Hmm? Today I told someone, he was saying he wanted quick ready made answers. So I said, no, search more, search more. No, sir, but I can't find it. Then I said, like, you search as if you're searching on shadi.com. Because it will be a You will have to scrutinize, scrutinize, scrutinize till you get the right information. So then he searched. Then in the end, he said that he got a girl as well as information both. So you, when you search, search thoroughly. And all the tests I have left open now, there is no time pressure, nothing. Your materials, I have given you the links and that is still very much maintained on Google Drive so that you can again download if you need. Finish the questions, important questions and the test and then you are ready. Right now your preparatory leave has started. Okay. I can put you on unmute now. Okay. You are allowed to unmute now. Shouldn't it happen? Hmm. And Dhaninjay and all you all, I don't see taking test. Huh? Take test. The more you take, better of you are. That's the easiest way of doing things. I don't know. Abhi to, I had told you the trick anyway. Abhi, there's nothing. You are not crooks. Otherwise, you would have found it earlier. Use any email because the mail will not go there, but you will get the responses anyway. Kya na kya cheating karna padta? Mere ko cheating karna padta. <laughs> Some of you are getting full marks also. Huh? So this also I must tell you. Some of you are getting full marks in the test. 30 out of 30. I will not tell you names now. Afterwards, when all of you are done, <laughs> then we will put then I will put up the list when we make it serious issue. But I'm telling you there are people who are already getting so you don't have to feel that uh, you will not get it. Hmm, Uday, yes, there are people who are getting full marks, so you can also get it. Once the fear of uh, assessment goes out of your head, now you will do very well. Where right now I understand our education system screws it up. You're always under pressure on assessment part. Kya hoiga? Kitna marks mein lega? Kitna marks? Get over it. Kya for padne wala life mein? Hmm? See, uh, honestly in life, people who do well are generally jo 19-20 se sab karte hai, 18 karte hai. Not the guys who do 20 upon 20 he sab. This is practicality. So stay relaxed. Okay. So I will let you go now unless you have got any questions now. Which I don't know many questions. Okay, I'm ending up meeting. Okay, bye. Good evening. Hmm.